originally intended to be a straight wing jet aircraft. And they proceeded with that. And then wind tunnel tests showed that it was not able to reach the desired speed that the Air Force required of, of 600 miles as a straight wing. Now, North American had known that the swept wing was really the way to go. There were some, there were tests being done. The D558 Skyrocket had established that um, in the late 1940s as well. And so they redesigned the F86 as a swept wing. It has a 35 degree sweep to it. And it has um, a, a general electric engine in it that has 6,000 pounds of thrust, which allows it to exceed 600 miles an hour when it's full on out. Um, these were the specs that the Air Force required. It carries with it six 50 caliber machine guns and the capability to carry up to 2,000 pounds of bombs or rockets or extra fuel, as you see here. It has its, its extra fuel tanks on it right now. Um, the F-80, they made almost six, uh, <coughs> almost 7,000 F-86s in a number of variants. This is, as I said, an F-86F. Um, we also have an F-86E on display, and we have a target aircraft that is an F-86H. Um, there was a special version, the D, which was um, a different mission than, than this particular aircraft. Uh, you'll hear it called the, as the Sabre Dog um, for the D for, for dog. Uh, um, the aircraft features a number of, of um, advanced technology, if you will. It has both heating and air conditioning. So when you're flying low, you want air conditioning, and when you're up there at 40,000 feet or above, you need heat, and so it has that. It is also completely hydraulically controlled, so the controls are very easy on the pilot. He doesn't tire um, having to move that aircraft around. It was rushed into service when the MiG-15 suddenly appeared in the skies um, over Korea in November of 1950, and the F-86s arrived in December. And right away, they engaged each other in MiG Alley and other parts of um, the northern Korean area. And it really turned out to be a very hard-fought contest. The two aircraft are close in their capabilities. But it really came down to tactics, and the F-86 ultimately ended up with, for every F-86 lost in combat, 10 MiGs were lost in combat. So it really had an incredible uh, victory ratio over the MiG-15. Um, you'll notice that, that you see these uh, on, the, on the face of the wing here, it's kind of protruded. This is a, a slat, and the slats um, deploy automatically based on the angle of attack that the aircraft is at. And what it does is it allows it to have better control when it's flying at slower speeds. Um, it doesn't necessarily slow the aircraft down, but it allows better control. You'll also notice the horizontal stabilizer moves in its entirety. It has, an ele it has elevators, but the whole stabilizer moves as one. And that is controlled by the pilot. Um, there is a camera right here for gun control and then the little ray dome here helps with the targeting in terms of establishing distance to help the, the pilot control the ratio of a shot so it, it helps to increase accuracy during combat. Um, F-86s remained in service all the way into the 1970s. This particular aircraft was built in 1953 and initially went to Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas where it was part of a training squadron. It was an aircraft that would have been used to prepare pilots for deployment in the F-86. And so this would have been an aircraft that they would have been basically learning the aircraft on. And it along with 23 other aircraft was then sold to the Argentine Air Force where it flew for 26 years with the Argentina Air Force. It was purchased after that by um, Mr. Friedkin, and he kindly donated it to the museum, and so we're very happy to, to have this be a part of our collection here. It is one of only a handful of F-86s that still fly. Um, any questions or anything that I can answer, which is not saying much. Um, I do know this, there are, uh, as I said, six 50 calibers. Each one carries 300 rounds. So do the math, how many rounds? 300 per gun. 
<laughs> Six guns. 1800. 1800. Hey. <laughs> See? <laughs> okay, well, let's do a raffle drawing. How about that? Here's the Okay. The Navy's version is the Fury, and um, it, it evolved over time. And yeah, it, it's a little smaller. It has folding wings, and we have it, we actually have one over in our outside display area. So there was a Navy version as well, the FJ3 Fury. Yes. So the guns are actually in here. You'll see these are the slots that help the, the bullets actually come out and suppress the flash. No, they fire a pretty big bullet. It's called a 50 caliber or a half inch diameter. I should have brought one out. It's pretty big. Uh, it's about five inches long. Yeah. And, and they fire a lot in, in short bursts. Okay. So.